Welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra, broadcasting live from Los Angeles. Today's topic is be idealess. Don't have an idea of anything. Spiritual, sp spiritual ideas are very, very dangerous and they keep you trapped. So as you get closer to the light, to awakening, to illumination, the less ideas you have of how things are, what spirituality is, what it means is much safer for you than carrying a bunch of ideas because the ideas keep you in bondage. We're going to get into that today and I'll give you some pointers so it makes it more clear uh, about this. So as usual, we're just going to do simple meditation and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to turn our attention inwards from putting your attention out on objects or thoughts or feelings or anything in a very simple way you just shift your attention inwards and you so if somebody has a hard time doing it it's very simple trace your thoughts back to where they originate and when you do trace your thoughts back then you will see that everything quiets down Go ahead, close your eyes, take a deep breath, and just relax in this moment. The more simple meditation is, the more effective it becomes because it doesn't require any sort of work. It doesn't really require effort it should be effortless effortless meditation is a lot more powerful than putting an effort into it so take a deep breath and bring your attention inwards towards the source of your thoughts look for the watcher the observer within yourself, the one who is aware of everything, the one who's here. Bring your attention towards that, which is your natural state of being, simply being here and not being involved. So you're disengaging from the Outer world by shifting your attention towards your own being. Very, very simple, very easy. Very effortless. Don't force anything. Don't get engaged with your mind, trying to stop your mind. There's no need to do that because you can't stop your mind with the mind. It just creates more involvement. Simply stay in this place of the observer. If thoughts want to, want to arise, that's fine. Bring your attention on the source of your thoughts which is very quiet.
Now imagine you're walking into the desert. We're in the middle of the a white sand desert with a lot of dunes and you're just walking. The weather is comfortable, the sun is shining. You're just walking aimlessly but you're very happy. You're not looking for anything or planning to go anywhere but you're simply enjoying the silence of being in the desert. There's a nice cool breeze touching your face. Very comfortable. You feel very safe. There's no stories going on. You feel like as your mind has become very quiet, you can feel the peace silence and the stillness of the desert. You're walking for a while. As you're walking in the middle of nowhere in this beautiful white sand desert, suddenly a door appears to you. It manifests out of nowhere. It's a door to an elevator. You walk into this, you open the door, you walk into an elevator because you can't resist it. You put your fears and worries away and you take a jump. You go for it. You, pl you press the button and the elevator starts to go deep seems like it's going underground but you can't tell the difference if it's going down or it's going up and the ele elevator keeps going and going for a long time this elevator is traveling you kind of lose all senses of whether it's going up or it's going down whether this elevator is traveling on a geographical place or it's you are traveling within your own consciousness you can't tell the difference everything is kind of blended with each other the elevator stops the door opens up and you walk out of the elevator. You enter into a space that it's all blue, deep blue. It's safe. It's cool. You feel safe. You're very relaxed. You're comfortable. You're not afraid. Yet it's very fascinating and interesting. You have entered into a space that is all blue. Imagine yourself in this place, see this place, and you don't have an idea about it. There's no idea that you have of what this is. At first, your mind wants to figure it out. But after a while, you let it go. And you surrender to what is. It seems like the space is communicating with you. 
but it has its own language. It's different than the language we use. And we have to use words. Right now we're using English to communicate, but this is a different language. It's a telepathic language. It's intuitive. You are familiar with this language. You have used it before. You're very, but now your attention has come more to this. That in order to communicate with this space where you're at, this new place, you have to use your power of intuition and shift to a different kind of language. It's telepathic. It's instant and the field is aware of your feelings, your thoughts before you even formulate words. So it's fascinating because it does communicate wisdom and intelligence and when it speaks to you, you pick it up very quickly and you understand what is going on. Go ahead and just be in this field. And just relax into it. The field is asking you to let go. To not have an idea. To kind of surrender, accept what is happening. You have no control over it. What is going on? You don't feel being in danger. Yet this is unfamiliar territory. Of course there is some fear, but the curiosity is stronger. And there is a sense of joy. You kind of feel like you're a five, six year old child. And you're discovering something very new for the first time. So that part of you, the childlike, is activated. The field is asking you to give in to that part rather than doing and being analytical trying to figure things out with your mind is to let go and allow and trust the field to guide you as you surrender more and kind of slowly giving in to the field, the field gives you, projects images in your mind. You begin to see things. But it's a different kind of seeing. You begin to hear things, but it's a different kind of hearing. You begin to know things, but it's a different kind of knowing. Everything happens very swiftly 
very smoothly, but it's a different language. It's a powerful force field of space that's holding you in its bosoms, it's in arms. You can feel that there is love, but in the meantime, every once in a while, your analytical mind kicks in and maybe there's a thought of a fear of what is happening because you like to be in control. But the power of the field is greater. The comfort that you receive by every time you let go is greater than the fear. The more you let go, the more fluid you feel you are. The more you relax into this place, the more you're emerging into oneness. Things starting to shift. You feel like you are sort of losing all senses of your body, the boundaries of your body, it seems like the field is penetrated into your body and you're kind of dissolving into it. It's taken over you, sort of. You see the blue, whether it's light, whether it's blue air, color, is slowly merging in your body and they have they're no longer separated by a boundary by any borders go ahead and breathe into that Every once in a while, a thought may come and say, what is happening? What's going on? I don't understand. But then comes a wave of comfort and bliss. You feel very comfortable. Something stronger then the power of your mind has taken over. You comfortably breathe into that and relax into it. As you relax into this space, state, there is a sense of familiarity. Even though in some way everything feels kind of weird, but something deep inside you recognizes that this is a safe sanctuary 
this is a place where possibly everything has started from. This is a place that maybe creation has begun from it. You don't really know, but it feels that way. And if this place is the source of creation, then you have nothing to worry about. Because you're one with it. Whenever your mind goes into silence and you're quiet, you know without thinking that you're completely one with the field. Everything gets provided. Everything gets communicated. There is no confusion. Everything becomes a part of the one. And when your mind, your analytical mind comes back, then comes with it this sense of being separated from the field and as if you are a person capable of doing your own thing. But then you fall back into your new state of being. And the comfort and the bliss of the field takes over. It is an interesting place to be in. You can see the difference. One requires you being an individual with your own sovereignty and your mind and having control. And the other is not being an individual, being lost into the oneness, absolutely a silent mind, and floating into this space and feeling the bliss. You decide to take this further and you decide to let go of this sense of control that you've been having and experiencing. Let go of that. In the beginning it's not very diff it is difficult but you also rely on the messages you get from the field. The telepathic messages, feelings, images come to you that you can let go and everything will be okay. As you slowly, slowly let go of this imaginary control, something very interesting begins to happen. You begin to experience that the particles of your body 
are dissolving into the field. Even though you know you have a body, your body has begins to dissolve into the, this field. You can't really distinguish the difference. It seems like everything has become one. But your consciousness is still intact. The sense of I am is here. You know that you are. But the idea of what you are is no longer there. You are, I am, but I am not anything yet here, yet healthy, happy, in total harmony with what is, and in complete bliss. As you more dissolve into the field, information begins to get to flow through you. Information becomes, intelligence becomes more available to you. Wisdom is being transmitted to you. And the wisdom is, you begin to see, feel, and notice that there is a powerful force of creation that is in charge of everything. This force is in control and this intelligence is perfectly acting out of pure intelligence, know-how, and order. Yet you may not understand why what is happening, but it knows what it's doing. In your surrender to this fleet field, you begin to see yourself and your being as if you're a raft on the river. You're no longer struggling, trying to force things to go your way. You simply have become a part of the river, a part of the flow. The water is taking you whichever direction is going and you're no longer suffering or struggling. You have become a part of the flow of life. Everything is happening, taking place perfectly. You're letting go of all the ideas you have of how things should be and you have received the wisdom of surrendering to what is and trusting that knowing all is well, that the field is taking care of you and the field knows what is going on and it's revealing itself to you and in fact you and the field are one. You're starting to recognize that that there has never been a separation in between the two of you, except in appearance. 
it did appear to be separated, but it was never separated. And now you're recognizing that. You feel very satisfied. You feel very happy. You feel wisdom has taken over your life. You feel free. Free from fear, worry, anxiety. Because you don't feel separated. You now know that you're one with all. It's all your own self. You're happy. You have a smile on your face. And you feel the bliss. You feel the love. Your mind is quiet. It's not playing any games and doesn't have any idea. It's still. Slowly, slowly, you're going back to the elevator that you have taken. Somehow you're being carried there. You don't mind it because you have surrendered to the flow. And now the flow is taking you back into the magic elevator. You get in there. The elevator starts to move. You don't know if it's going up or down, but it doesn't matter. You know you're in good hands. And the elevator keeps going and going and going. After a long journey, the elevator arrives on the surface of the desert. Door opens up and you walk out. You see the beautiful desert. The sun is kind of setting and the colors of the sky have changed into multiple different kind of red, pink, purple, gold. You feel calm, quiet, in complete harmony. And you carry the wisdom that's been transmitted to you. And you're walking back to where you came from. But there is a big difference. Everything has stayed the same, yet everything has changed. The world is still the same. But the way you are in it and connecting with it has changed forever. You have become free. Free from fear, worry, anxiety. And now you know that you are one with the world. In a magical way, your sense of control is gone and you are surrendered to the flow of life and everything seems very easy now. Slowly, slowly come back into your physical body. Here and now, 
with the new wisdom that you have acquired and slowly reintegrate into here and now So our topic of the day, be idealess. For me, what happened was the more I the more I went deeper in my spirituality, the more I began to realize that I don't know anything, the more wisdom came, the more I thought I figured things out. And it's interesting because existence, the force, the divine administration, it has its own way of doing things. Obviously, I don't understand a lot of it, and it doesn't matter. I don't really try to figure it out, because every time I did think, I figured things out, and it was like, okay, I got this. Life would pull the plug on me and would pull the rug from under my feet and will throw me like, oh wow, you know, you know, all of a sudden I'm off balance. And it's like, okay, you thought you figured it out. You thought you're advanced in your spirituality, but my son, you don't know anything. And you don't know anything because it's very simple. Do you know why you don't know anything? Do you know why you can't figure it out no matter what? You can sit down, you can read all the books in the library of Alexandria and you're going to be more confused than ever. You can never figure it out because it's infinite infinite infinity it keeps going and going and going and its vastness is beyond the analytical mind because the mind's capacity is only so much and this one goes beyond the mind so you can't figure it out and the sooner you come to those to that term and admit it to yourself and let go the the more the so, the more wisdom starts to be downloaded i know it's interesting but that's how it works or that's how it seems like it's working so the wise one comes to this point that begin to let go of all the ideas, whatever the ideas, spiritually, spe especially spiritual ideas. 
because spiritual conditioning is very dangerous. And I've been on this path for a very long time, and I come across a lot of different people. And those who have done all these different courses or been with all these different teachers, and they're more in trouble than some people who are than the newbies. So this is where the danger is, that we have an idea how spirituality should be, how the nature of life is, how life should be, how society should act, all these different things. And now it's very clear, especially in this pivotal point in our history of time, is all bets are off as if everything has turned upside down. And it's a very strong indication, a very st strong way of communicating of life to us that you don't know anything. I'll do whatever I want at any moment. And all these ideas you have of how things should be are meaningless. So, those of you who are confused or you feel like you're suffering, you know it if you're suffering or not. You're depressed, you're confused, you're afraid, you don't know what to do, you don't know where to go, where to bring your attention, who to listen to what teachings to follow because there's so many different things out there. So many different kind of teachers, guidance, books, methods. And you're trying to do this, you're trying to do that, you're doing a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Is my suggestion is systematically Try to drop your ideas about everything that you know. I know it's kind of scary. I know it's kind of wild. But you will see what happens. Especially, especially your spiritual ideas whatever it is you've been practicing shamanism you've been practicing Native American uh, tribes of how the religion is like yeah, you've been with different Indian gurus if you're in Whichever, whatever you've been practicing, Sufism, Buddhism, whatever it is, you have been conditioned in a certain way of spirituality. If you think like you need to be vegetarian, because if you're not vegetarian, you're not going to arrive to God and oneness. If you have an idea that you need to be celibate in order to arrive to oneness, but you have strong sexual desires, you forced yourself to be vegetarian when you really like meat or fish or chicken, or you force yourself to become vegan because you think that's how you're going to get closer. Uh, you think you need to be, be a monk and go live on your own somewhere away from the society and that's how you're going to get to God. Um, you need to get up at four in the morning to do special pujas and practices and that's how it's going to get you to God. If it's not coming for you naturally and it's not happening, means you're not in a flow. If you have to force yourself to do it, means you're not in the flow of the river. So you're controlling something and forcing something. 
And of course, when you have ideas about spirituality, of how things should be, then you've set yourself up to suffer because existence keeps throwing this in your face and things are not the way you want them to be. And you just, it's very simple. Examine it for yourself. I always sh share it with my people. Don't believe a word I say. Don't take what I tell you blindly. Examine it for yourself. And see how it feels. See, find, you'll find your discoveries on your own. This has to be your own realization. I'm just a guide. I'm just pointing out the finger. I say, go that direction. Try that direction. But you have to realize it yourself because I can't realize it for you. I had to do the same thing that my teacher did to me. Showed me the way, or at least my way, because there's many different ways to get to the top of the mountain. So, I walked that way. I trusted my teacher, as scary as it was. And I followed the direction, and it led me to inner peace. It led me to happiness. Because that's all it's about. You want to be happy. But the thing is, it's interesting because you think this happiness means, and a lot of people in spiritual world, they want to learn techniques and methods of manipulating things so they can get what they want. So how many courses have you taken about, or how many times you spend money talking to psychics mediums trying to find out when am I going to meet my soulmate, my twin flame, or how can I attract my soulmate? How many people have done that? How many courses have you taken? How you can manifest everything you want in this life? How you can create your own reality? It's all about an I thought. A person wanting to find some kind of techniques and ways of manipulating existence in a way to get what the person wants. Whether I want more money, a better partner or different partner, live in a different place, a better job, better status. I mean, there's nothing wrong with wanting something better. Don't take me wrong. But the amount of jumping jacks that we go through and the sort of things we do to manipulate things to go our way, and we're not even aware of it. And then we get in a spiritual path and it gets worse, is ultimately, if you look at it, is how can I manipulate existence to get what I want? So I acquire all these ideas of what to do. And that is what holding you back to arrive to inner peace, to arrive to happiness, because, because you forget what the goal is. The goal is for you to be happy. That's what you want. Everything else, to me, is just second, third, fourth, whatever. Ultimately, you want to be happy. But we're projecting, we're thinking happiness means to get objects. Our objects, our desires are going to make me happy. 
if I was more healthy, if I was taller, if I was thinner, if I had a better partner, if I had more money, if I lived in a better world, if I lived in another peaceful place, blah, 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 I would be happy. But that's not it. It's not there. A spiritual person doesn't drink. A spiritual person, if they smoke a s cigarettes, they're not spiritual. If they smoke a joint, they're not spiritual. If they have sexual thoughts, they're not going to get to God. Even about reincarnation, let that idea go too past lives I'm being channeled through entities I come from another star system I'm connected to another star system you're gonna have to let go of you have to be honest with yourself and that's what self-realization is self-awakening is that you're going to have to get ruthlessly honest with yourself. So get a piece of paper and a pen and write down for yourself these ideas that you have as you're progressing during the week of how a spiritual person should be, how what they should practice, what is right, what is wrong, write them down. And you will see you got a long list. And that long list is what is holding you back because you're going to have to let go of all of them. And some of them look very righteous. You love it. They're great. But you have no idea that those are the chains that are connected to your ankles and they don't let you get out of your prison. And they cause you suffering because you have an idea of what God is, how you get to God, and how God should behave or act you have all these ideas about righteousness. And you're going to have to let them all go as much as you love them and you're attached to them. Everything's got to go. One at a time, you're going to have to let go all of them. If at the end of the day, at the end, you want to merge into the oneness. Because the oneness doesn't give a damn about what you think. The oneness means everything. You. Oneness means everything that is beautiful and everything that is ugly. All of them. Nobody tells you if you feel really good about being vegetarian, be vegetarian. But vegetarian, being vegetarian has nothing to do with spirituality. If you think there is more God into vegetables than there is God into meat, fish, chicken, then you're out to lunch. You don't know what's up. If you think being spiritual and being in direct connection with God, somebody has to do your rituals or your jumping jacks or dress the way you dress, wearing an orange robe, putting malas, keeping their hair, their, their hair uh, shaved or long hair with a beard. Then you're out to lunch. Come back next life. You're not ready. Any kind of ideas you have how spirituality should be 
is you have no clue because spirituality arriving to that place and developing that connection with the divine self does not require you looking in a certain way or behaving in a certain way. Is to recognize that the presence of the oneness of God is in everything and everywhere. Everything is God and God is everywhere including in a, a vulgar, vulgar language or doing something inappropriate. It's everywhere. So you have to let go your ideas of good and bad to rise above it in order to raise your, your vibrations to a higher consciousness. You have to go beyond these things. Otherwise, it won't happen. It's very simple. It just won't happen. But the more free you become, the more you let go of your ideas. You have idealists about anything, whatever that is. You just are always in this place that I don't know and I don't need to know but then when you're in this place wisdom reveals itself to you they will download information to you you will realize things you notice things and it's like oh wow I never noticed that I never knew that because the cup is full like Right now, I have this cup of water, so I can only put this much more water into it, but that's all. If I want more w information, more water, I have to get rid of this so I can fill it up. But if it's filled up, you're full of, inf full of yourself and you have all these ideas. I can't help you. You already know everything. You have to use, it's very simple, look in the mirror. It's so simple that you don't need to call a psychic to tell you these things. Just look in the mirror and see where you're at. Ask yourself a question. Am I clear? Am I happy? Am I in a flow of life? Am I surrendered? Or you're struggling and you suffer and you're confused. It's super simple. Examine that. If you're struggling, you're suffering, you're confused, then all those ideas you have they're not doing anything for you. You need to just let them go one at a time or all at once and be idealist. And then let the wisdom come. Because as the wisdom takes over, you begin to recognize that you're actually like a raft on the river. You start to flow in and you become a part of this flow and existence keeps revealing itself to you but even then don't get this idea that you know it because you would never know it but you can become one with it you can become one with existence but you can't figure it out because to figure it out you have to be separated from it. Hold on for one moment, please. My Instagram ended, so I'm going to... Okay, just...
Just one moment, please. I apologize. All right, so anybody has any questions, you can, since I think we have taken that option of unmuting yourself, I don't know if that option is there or not. So you're welcome to either, if you can unmute yourself, we can talk. If not, wave at me or write something on the chat box and then I will unmute you and we can, we can, you can ask me your question. Hi, Tanas. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Um, you just brought a lot of clarity to me. It makes perfect sense. Beautiful. That's great. But it just feels like I just keep going like back and forth. And there's, um, there's still a little bit of like fear of like going into the flow and some confusions, you know, and um, right. Yeah. Whenever I, I feel like whenever I start to write things, like I get really emotional and things comes up and I don't know how to like process it or what to do. Okay, so when you're writing um, some things, you get emotional. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, okay, let's start with the first thing first. You mentioned about uh, you feel more clear but there is, at times fear arises and confusion comes. It's when I, I speak to other people because everybody has a different idea, like a different mm -hmm. advice, you know, and it just, it doesn't right. really like reside with me. And it right. what resides with me more is what comes from me, from here. Right, exactly. That's beautiful. Others are reflections of who you are. So when they're giving you these other ideas or advices that's not resonating with you, mm -hmm. is existence is trying to show you that rely on your inner voice because, oh. and develop that. That's what the I was real, Yeah, the real guru is here. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we can communicate with the real guru because we don't understand the language. That's why the other guru appears, the other teacher, the teacher from the outside in a human form, for example, appears in your life to give you guidance. guidance. But that teacher is, if it's genuine, is the right one, is a reflection of yourself. It's coming from within. As you go forward, you begin to recognize the voice within and separate this language and this voice from the voice of your mind. They're very mm -hmm. subtle, but you recognize it. One the is voice the of the mind is, sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. The voice go of ahead. the mind is like much more chaotic and it doesn't take me to a good place, but um, that's why I'm, I'm struggling to like quiet that because I, right. like, I kind of feel like I know that in here is where it's like safe and I can find, you know, my way. So. Exactly. That's why you, you find methods of how to go beyond the mind into silence. Mm -hmm. And you can't quiet the mind with the mind. So no. if you're thinking that you don't want to think and you're mm -hmm. trying I don't know how to think, it, it <laughs> won't really work. Hard. No. So that's why we're using different kind of meditations or active meditations 
to go beyond the mind by recognizing the observer, by recognizing the silence. Okay, I'm going to give you an example. For instance, you recognize that there's fear or confusion rising in you, mm -hmm. right? So you recognize that. So from where do you see it? Who is it that notices some thoughts of fear, worry, and anxiety, or some feelings of worry or confusion? To whom do they arrive? arise? They appear, and somebody notices it, right? Mm -hmm. And that somebody is you. You, you become aware that you're afraid and you become aware that you're confused, correct? Yes. And you're, and you're telling, and honestly, you're telling me this. And you're being honest. You're saying, look, sometimes I feel much better. So you're aware that you're feeling better and you're aware that things appear and disappear yeah yes so far it's kind of like um trying to you know put my foot into the water and then i keep bringing it out and just kind of scared to you know just jump in right that's that's okay that's a natural part of the flow you just trust keep trusting that the force god presence okay and that's not, it doesn't matter what word I use. I'm pointing at that, that which is created the world is taking you. You're, you're in good hands. You wouldn't be on this platform and keep showing up and <laughs> communicating if you weren't in, on, on the right path. You're, you're Can on I the right path. Can I ask you path. something? Yeah, sure. Who's the one that's talking when that when I write it makes me cry? <laughs> well, there's only one, honey. <laughs> so there is no separation. When you're writing and the writing's coming flowing out of you. Mm -hmm. Right? Have you been in this place that you're just writing and you're in a flow of writing? And then maybe you get emotional and you cry. Mm -hmm. Okay. So nothing's wrong with it. When that is happening, are you in a place of thinking about it? Like I shouldn't be writing or I shouldn't yeah. be feeling or I shouldn't be crying. Or mm -hmm. it's just happening all of it in that moment. No, it feels like really beautiful. Like... There's like this um, something greater than me that's talking and it's like, it's very loving and it's like, it, it brings me deeper to my soul and um, right. it, sometimes it just amazes me and then all of a sudden like, um, I don't. Uh... I get it. I, I understand. Okay. So check, check this out. When you're writing and you're in your flow of writing and you feel amazing or you cry or you get emotional mm -hmm. in the moment that this is happening there is no thoughts there is no mind judging you what you're doing is right or wrong it's you're in that moment you're in pure meditation oh, wow. you're one with your pen with the pad the writing is flowing and there's no one doing it. Existence is God, existence, the supreme intelligence is operating through a body called Tanaz and is writing these things. Mm -hmm. So there is no separation between you and God and spirit. It's the same one who's writing it and feeling things. Later on, when the mind comes, that's where the problem is because yeah. now you have an idea of, oh, 
I was writing, but then I got emotional and maybe this is not good or, <laughs> or I shouldn't be crying. Now there's a story attached oh. to this. And that story creates separation. Okay. Okay. So the mind appears and then there's a separation. The mind has an idea that you, what you were doing wasn't right or wrong or da 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 da, -da whatever is the story attached to it. <laughs> mm -hmm. But when you're writing and you get emotional and you feel and you cry or whatever, that's very innocent. It's, it's just how existence, how God in that moment through this unit called Tanaz is expressing itself. Her I majesty, think, uh, the supreme is expressing itself through you. Oh, but there's like, then all of a sudden I feel this little girl in me that has like such intense emotions that I like, I feel like I don't know what to do with her. And like, what if it's like bringing up old wounds and I don't know how to heal it? So you're worried about maybe the old wounds open up and you don't know how to heal it? Yes. Right. So that comes in a form of what? A thought? No. It, um, the feelings, it gets overwhelming and I don't know what to do with that. Like, right. Little okay. So what you do is you need to start child. to practice. What you do is, it's very simple. And I'll tell you what to do. And you tell me next week how it went. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. for everyone else. Simply observe your thoughts and observe your emotions. So let's say an overwhelming feeling comes, whatever that is. I mean, let's use an emotion, okay? Mm -hmm. um, you're sad. Sadness comes. Or fear comes, okay? It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It really comes. It's overwhelming. And you're really afraid and you feel really a lot of anxiety. And you're simply remain in this place of being aware of it. And you tell yourself that fear, worry, anxiety is present. It's here. It's present. You acknowledge the presence of this powerful, overwhelming feeling. I know what it is. It's, uh, it's like a need for love, like a deep need for love. Okay, that's fine. You're, you're not, first of all, sweetheart, you're not the only one who experiences that. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> we all do. We all have this feeling of deep need for love. You're not the only one. So don't feel like something's wrong with you. Okay. Everybody else feels the same way. But let's say use that, use that feeling, okay? Mm -hmm. So I want to give you the tool of how you deal with it. Okay. The feeling comes that you're not good enough, you're not loved enough, you're lonely, nobody mm -hmm. knows what you're going through, mm -hmm. your family doesn't understand you, yeah. whatever it is, believe me, I have gone through all <laughs> of these phases 50 times, not even once. So, and then I get frustrated when like the outside world is so much into superficial things and uh, yeah. then I feel more alone. <laughs> right. Okay. Just hear me out. Let me explain this part and we'll, we'll Sorry. talk about the other things too. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. Right. So this is what you do and everybody else can use the same thing is an emotion comes like I feel lonely and no one sees me or I'm left out, whatever it is. Let's not have mm -hmm. a hang up over that. Okay. So what you do is you acknowledge the fact that you feel lonely. So mm -hmm. loneliness is here and you're feeling it. And you simply tell yourself that loneliness, this is the language you have to use because okay. that's where consciousness comes. This is where awareness comes, where light comes, then there is no more darkness. Mm -hmm. So 
instead of being a victim of an emotion, mm -hmm. you're simply acknowledging that this emotion is here. It's present. So you tell yourself that loneliness is here, but you don't say, I am lonely. Oh. Yeah. If you say I'm lonely, then you're identifying with that emotion oh. and you, you become that emotion. If mm -hmm. you simply acknowledge its presence, that mm -hmm. it's here, then that you are experiencing the emotion. We're not resisting it because if you resist something, you want to push it away. And this is what in a lot of schools are teaching you to do positive thinking, replacing with a negative thought, and that doesn't work. You simply acknowledge that feeling, that thought is here. Acknowledge it and feel it because you can't not feel it. But then it goes away. Once you acknowledge it that it's here, it, it, but you don't say, I am lonely. You don't say, I feel lonely. You just say, loneliness is here is visiting me and you're simply aware of it and you're feeling it because you can't help it not feel it and then it loses its power and it goes away and maybe something else comes maybe silence comes and let's say you wake up one morning and you feel really sad there's nothing wrong with feeling sad but you simply tell yourself you're getting into the habit of doing that. And you tell yourself sadness is here. Sadness is visiting me. You feel it. You're aware of it. But you don't say, I am sad. And you're watching this emotion and then it goes away. So what happens is everything becomes very fluid. Things come and go, but you don't, and you don't identify with them. So what, what that means is you are recognizing and you're bringing your attention to the watcher within yourself, the observer your attention has shifted rather than putting your attention on an object which is a feeling or a thought that is passing through and identifying with it is you have brought your attention on that part of yourself which is simply is aware is aware of whatever is happening then a separation takes place. You've created a very tiny hairline of a crack in between your, you who are still and present and the observer versus these emotions that up to now you thought they define who you are. Let me, okay, I unmuted you. All right, go ahead. Is this making any sense? Yes. Do you think you can do it? Um, I think I need a lot of practice because I get a lot of like um, thoughts in my mind, like memories replaying over and over again, like right. in a loop. And because right. it's trying to figure something out and then that right right okay so so okay this is very simple you just said that you get these thoughts these memories or whatever they are because mm -hmm. that used to happen to me and haunted me for a long time these memories of a past life that was haunting me for years and years and you're simply same thing when you become aware of them that they're in your mind 
Okay, simply tell yourself that, make a name for it, whatever name. Simply tell yourself that they're here, they're visiting me. When you become aware that you're haunted by these thoughts, use this language. Remind yourself that the thoughts, the memories of the loop are here and they're visiting you. And then you will see what happens. You're consciously reminding yourself that you're not the thoughts. I'm not the thoughts. No. Well, how can you be your thoughts? Because if you were your thoughts, then you would never know. Because you're not thinking all the time. If you were thinking all the time, then you would never know you're thinking. Because thinking would be your only reality. If you were depressed all the time, you would have never known you're depressed because that's your only reality. So there must be, depression must be against something else that you are aware of it. It's something that comes and goes. The thoughts come and there's a background. Like you see behind me, there's a black background. So, if I hide out, the black background is still there. And when I leave this studio and I go away, the background doesn't go away. So, the background means the real Tanaz is always silent and she's still. She's just sitting here and she's silent and she's watching. She's not coming and going. The thoughts come and go. Mm -hmm. So you recognize the truth of who you are, which is stillness, silence, the observer. So you, the real you, Tanaz, is sitting there like this. She doesn't care what comes and goes. So a lot of thoughts come. She's simply aware of it. That's why she's reporting to me right now. I get all these thoughts. Well, how do you know you get all these thoughts? Because something I'm witnessing inside... It. Huh? I'm witnessing it coming and going. Yeah, because the witness is not busy. She is quiet. The witness is not involved. So my job is to make you recognize the truth of who you are. And as you start to recognize that part, you become free. So I kept remembering that there was people telling me you don't know who you are. It's kind of like everything that I would say, I would get challenged by somebody would walk by and challenge what I thought I like knew. Right, right. I understand. Well, and it kind of freaked me out. <laughs> <laughs> well, you will find the right school of spirituality for you. And it seems like slowly, slowly you're coming. You, you have to, everyone has to find in that moment in their lives what teachings is really working for them and what they resonate with. This one. As well as trusting your intuition because, you know, it's interesting. I'm going to tell you the story is when I landed in Lucknow, Uttar Pradesh in India, and I landed at the feet of my Satguru, Punjaji. We called him Papaji. And I was so naive. And uh, I really didn't know anything yet. I mean, I knew things, but but it was a blessing because I didn't. I only wandered around the spiritual market for for two, three years, 
of going into these other places. I check the Islamic Sufism, uh, a little um, some Buddhism, some different things, and. Uh, Hold on a second. Okay. And I was fishing in spiritual market. So, and nothing was really resonating with me. Everything kind of was kind of confusing. And especially the... Uh, different uh, ideology or schools that they were talking about, I need to be a vegetarian and I have to give up sex. And it was like, okay, maybe I can give up being vegetarian, but I, I don't know about giving up sex to get to God. There has to be another way to get to God. And then there were all these different things, like I was drawn to Osho, and there was all these meditations like dynamic or kundalini. You had to get up at six in the morning or five in the morning to be able to go to the ashram and do these uh, uh, meditations. And I was like, my God, I'm really not into any kind of discipline. There must be a lazy ways man to enlightenment. So, because I'm not cut out for these kind of disciplines. Definitely not at that time in my life. Of course, things changed. I've become a lot more disciplined. But, or the thoughts, reading books from Ram Das, thinking, okay, I have to go to some monastery in Tibet or in Nepal, and I have to just give up everything and sit in silence in a lotus position for six months it was like it's not my thing and I come across Papaji Punjaji my sad guru and the first day I'm sitting with him the first thing he says there's nothing to do and nowhere to go and I'm like what like what do you mean nothing to do and nowhere to go and he says you're already God and you're already there and you can never be separated from God. Just be quiet. All you have to do is be quiet. And I was like, this is my teacher. I resonate with these teachings. Th this is for me. It wasn't for my friend. It wasn't for my cousin. It wasn't for someone else. That was for me. It was like, I... I this is it. So Advaita Vedanta is the teachings that I'm attracted to and it became the very basis of fifth dimensional quantum awareness which is very firmly based into silence. It means a quiet mind. Of course, it still took years. It wasn't like coming to this teacher at that stage of my my development and the next day you're fully enlightened we do we all got glimpses of the self but it was still a process but i knew i was on the right track still doubts came confusions came i checked into other people's teachings but i wasn't resonating with them so, and I'm not saying that a certain kind of teachings that you are receiving, don't take me wrong, it's all in a moment. So, you may resonate with a tradition or a certain kind of teachings at a period in your life, but don't even have an idea that this is it, because that can change to something else and you get drawn to something else, and that's okay. But it's really good once you find the one teachings or teacher that you really resonate with and then you feel like you're on the right track. Okay, so let's see. I hope I answered a lot of your questions, Tannaz. We 
are beginning our free online global self-awakening workshop starting on June 20th. So it's going to be on a weekend, June 20th and 21st, then June 24th and 25th, and June 27th and 28th. The workshop is going to begin at 9.30 to 11.30 in the morning uh, California time, Pacific Standard Time, which is going to be 18.30 to 20.30 European time. And if you're in New York City, then you know that our time difference is three hours and you guys are three hours uh, ahead of us. Um, so the dates are set. I'm excited to tell you. We're sending out our emails uh, today. We had to solve a lot of technical issues we had, so everything is ready to go. Um, feel free to invite friends. If you would like to have direct interaction with me, then you would need to come through Zoom. Uh, we're broadcasting simultaneously on YouTube and Facebook. So, but I can't communicate with anybody on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, it's too much for me. So, our communication is going to be on Zoom. So, if you want to have direct communication with me, then come on our system, the Zoom. Otherwise, you can watch the uh, workshop on YouTube and Facebook live. Anybody has any questions for me? Yeah, I'm on. Uh... Hi. Okay, hi. Hi, Hilda. Hi, I have a question to you from Helen. She's in pain right now. Do you have uh, any good recommendations what she can do? Yeah, when uh, one of the best ways is that when you have intense pain is that normally we contract, we go into a contraction. So if you simply for a moment, even though if it's uncomfortable, you just breathe into it for a few seconds, for let's say five seconds you breathe, you let go and you simply tell yourself pain is here, pain is visiting me and you breathe into it and then as you breathe into it, you take your attention away and you take your attention to the tip of your toes and you bring your attention there and you kind of like scan your body. You bring your attention from tip of your toes to your ankles, to your knees, to your uh, thigh muscles, to your hips, and you move your attention up. And you kind of create a loop. Like energy is coming from your toes and flowing and goes through your crown chakra and you go, you move. So your attention goes elsewhere. And that helps a lot of times to uh, ease up the pain. Okay? Yeah, great. Thank you. Great. Our next academy is going to be next Wednesday. I am not doing the academy during the uh, uh, workshop because it's too much for me. Um, actually, I think to, yeah, let's say 24th and 25th, actually it's going to happen to be the workshop, right? So uh, next Wednesday, we do have the academy and followed by the um, Global Self-Awakening Workshop. If you want to get some information, uh, by this afternoon we will have uh, the description of the workshop on my website.
And in the workshop, I'm going to, we will go through different things. Um, I'll give you the tools, guidance, how you can deal with these unwanted emotions. And um, a lot of people have been asking me, why is this happening in the world? What does it mean? Um, of course, there's a lot of concerns, fear, confusion, worry about wh where the world is going. So um, I'll share uh, with you um, what's happening, what to look for, and how you can stay in this place within yourself that is not changing and is not affected. And in fact, what is happening in the world right now is not out of malice intention by the Supreme Being. The Supreme Soul is very well aware of what's going on. And this, what is happening is the shift we're in to a higher consciousness, to a different level. So this is what we've been talking about and waiting for in pseudo-spirituality for years and years for the shift to happen and right now it's happening we're in the midst of it and it's not always easy or comfortable those who are not equipped and they're not trained and they haven't been on a spiritual path of course there there are suffering but it's this is a part of their awakening because the house is in fire, you're lying down, you're in deep sleep, and you're dreaming about, you have a sweet dream. And your dad, your mom comes and is shaking you and wants to wake you up and get you out of the house before the roof collapses on you and kills you. So this is what's happening. The supreme being the love of God is waking us up to the truth of who we are, to make us recognize that we're not who we think we are. We are something else, much greater than what we thought. So it's a wake-up process. That's why this is happening across the world. That's why we're forced to be in isolation. It's kind of a forced mandatory um, meditation or being into a uh, vipassana retreat that you have to dig inside whether you like it or not because all the outside entertainments a lot of them are taken away so you can't distract yourself so much you have to look inside so it appears to be that the process has accelerated itself, which is a very good thing. We're in good hands, very good hands. I'd like to welcome you all. We're coming close to the end of the Academy. Um, as I mentioned, our online, free online self-awakening, free online um, Global Self-Awakening Workshop begins next weekend on the 20th of June and it goes all the way to 28th of June. Feel free to share this information with your loved ones. They can cruise in and cruise out as they wish. Also, uh, check out my website, zaratustra.tv and uh, also our email address is info at zaratustra.tv if you want to send us an email let us know uh, of your thoughts or where you're at or share information with me uh, my facebook youtube podcast and twitter page is zaratustra 5d if you want to look at some of the previous recordings of the academy uh, we have them all on my YouTube channel, as well as we term, term, turn them to a podcast, um, which is all you can find under the media section on my website, or go to my YouTube channel, and there's hundreds of Academy videos. Uh, you can go through the titles and see which one you resonate with.
and uh, make sure you subscribe to it. I look forward to seeing you next week. Sending you lots of love and light. Just stay in your heart. Come back to the heart. Come back to this place. Away from the fog and all this noise. And when you do come back here every single time, you recognize and you meet your divine being. And you come to this place that the message is always the same. All is well. Everything is in good hands. Let go of your imaginary control. Leave the creation to the Creator. That which has created this world is responsible for directing it and taking it where it goes. You're not in control of that. You're not in charge of it. And it has nothing to do with you. Come back to your inner silence and recognize the love that is here. And everything calms down and things start to make sense. Thank you for joining me. Sending you my love and light. Namaste.